scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. When, when Pastor Jakes told me about the, the stretch that has been happening in this ministry, I was very humbled. It takes a lot of passion for God and stamina in the spirit to stretch it's one thing to fast for that long, then to pray in the morning and to pray in the evening. It takes more than desire. There is an engracing that must come upon a man. And I really truly salute this vision. It's impossible to give God this level of commitment and then not have his attention in an unusual way. So um, really my assignment is, I, I came to pray along with us. That, that's really, so I hope we, we just pray, it's just to, to pray along with us. I believe in the ministry of prayer, but then I believe in effective prayer. Prayer that works. Prayer that produces results. Hallelujah. So um, what we'll do is I will just give a charge, we'll pray, give a charge, we'll pray wherever we stop. Would that be fine? So let's pray in the spirit for a minute or two and then we'll be seated. When you pray in the spirit, you open up your spirit man. Jesus was teaching 
and his character in his teaching ministry was to use parables um, when he was teaching to a mixed multitude he would usually use parables to explain the mysteries of the kingdom and this was a parable the bible says luke 18 and verse 1 he spake a parable unto them to this intent or to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint so jesus here whatever else he's saying is to buttress on this point showing the power of prayer that men ought always to pray and not to faint he encourages all men to pray not men in trouble not men in need he says the moment you realize you are a man it is part of the requirements to remain alive part of the requirements to remain effective he says all men not men in need not men in trouble god never prayed as god but when god became a man he prayed there is no record of god praying as god but when he became a man in the person of jesus he prayed even though the word he prayed and today because he ascended to heaven and he's seated as a man he still continues to pray making intercession for the saints prayer is for men not men in need not men in need of power not men in distress prayer is for men the idea that prayer is just an emergency strategy to solve problems is the reason why most believers are prayerless because the narrative that has been sold to believers for many years is that prayer is just an emergency mechanism that helps you to solve problems you see that in my opinion the highest expression of humility is to be prayerful prayerlessness is pride because it is proof that you are declaring self-sufficiency outside of the assistance of heaven when men pray it is an expression of deep humility before god in recognition that unassisted and by yourself we do not amount to much are we together so he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint second scripture luke chapter 11 jesus was confronted by his disciples over the subject of prayer and the bible says it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased one of his disciples said unto him lord teach us to pray so you don't just pray you are taught to pray effective prayer comes from a sound teaching ministry to understand the dynamics of prayer that produces power he said teach us to pray Luke 11 and verse 1 just as John taught his disciples to pray now you must understand that in this scripture they were not prayerless people the issue was not prayerlessness the issue was inefficiency in prayer they noticed that there was a way Jesus prayed that produced power and produced results they were not prayerlessness they were they were not confronting the issue of prayerlessness they were prayerful people but their prayer was not producing results can i tell you it is impossible to remain indefinitely prayerful in the presence of consistent lack of results if you keep praying and praying and it does not produce results eventually your fire and your fervor will dwindle when people pray and their prayer commands results it is difficult for people to become prayerless under that condition the reason why our churches have people frowning at anything prayer is because subliminally over the years they have learned that this kind of prayer does not work so their refusal to come for prayer meetings is just a polite way of saying i do not believe in this 
hallelujah he spake a parable that men ought always to pray and now the disciples confronted him and they said teach us to pray let's see what he taught them in response to that question and he said unto them when ye pray this must be your approach to prayer are we ready now number one our father he's teaching how to pray and he's saying in approaching prayer the first thing is you must understand the person you are speaking to the revelation of the person you are speaking to can determine the entire construct of your prayer life it says when you approach god in prayer you must realize that he is our father the word father comes from the greek word abba it means source it means sustainer it means defender it means protector that means in approaching prayer if you have plan b then he is not abba Abba means you must approach him with the consciousness that I do not have any other option. I come to you as my source. The source there does not just mean the beginning, the originator. That when you pray, he's not just saying recite this as a chant. He's saying approach prayer with this consciousness. Number one, our father. You are Abba, the fatherhood of God is is a very powerful component in effective prayer you must understand the fatherhood of god and jesus himself was teaching us about fatherhood and he said if you been evil remember that scripture matthew 7 from verse 7 when he was teaching on prayer ask and it shall be given seek you shall find knock and the door shall be opened unto you and he said for everyone that asketh receiveth for him that knocketh it shall be opened is that true and then and he says or what man is there of you of whom his son asked bread and he will give him a stone he's confronting fatherhood now or if you ask for a fish he will give him a serpent verse 11 if ye then being evil do you know what he's saying he's saying by your nature you are evil and wicked people but even in that depth of wickedness there is still a provision to honor fatherhood that as wicked as you are you still have that sense of compassion that when your children confront you you can be excited to do them good even though you are wicked people then he says how much more shall your father so god's definition of father is not just one who has a son is one who is quick to give the ease of release is one of his definitions of fatherhood are we learning now so that when you approach prayer the fatherhood the consciousness of the fatherhood of god will give you the audacity to know that you will receive you can confront a deity and you're not sure as to his intent with respect to your request but he's saying this god you are approaching is father everybody say father one more time say father it is very powerful the fatherhood of god if you being evil know how to give good gifts so when i approach god in prayer i am not praying to the warrior i am not praying to the lion of the tribe of judah he is all that but he is father are we together there are men here who are multi-dimensional all men a man can be a pastor a man can be a businessman a man can be and whatever dimension you approach is a dimension that is revealed to you are we together if i want to meet the ceo i have to go through the protocol of meeting the ceo and while i'm queuing in annoyance hoping for a chance to see him a young boy will run and pass everybody and run because he's not going to meet a ceo he's going to meet father are we together number two we're still examining luke 11 our father the second revelation on prayer that Jesus taught them is which art in heaven that means in approaching effective prayer you will need faith because it's in a dimension that is not physical 
are we together now that understand that even though he's your father there is you are operating from a duality of realms you will on you will need to understand the component that connects the invisible and the visible our father who is not physically here with me that means i will need to understand faith in dealing with him you must approach that father in faith because you are dealing with a reality that is beyond the realm and the scope of science how am i sure that he's hearing me faith hebrews 11 and verse 6 he says for without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh unto god must come having this consciousness number one that he is he exists and then number two he is a rewarder it's not what he does it's his name he is a rewarder he is he exists are we together then number three hallowed be your name i just want to touch on this very quickly and then we'll pray hallowed be your name that means don't get too familiar with his fatherhood that you forget that that father is still god you must approach with the spirit of reverence do not allow the consciousness of his fatherhood make you abuse it because you see even though he is your father he is god the consciousness of the fatherhood of god can give room for a lot of carelessness even in prayer like you see a lot of believers do but he said you must keep that component of reverence that even though he's your father he is god hallowed be your name the word hallow means to revere your office the name there means his office even though you are father i come with regard and reverence to that office then number four he says thy kingdom come this is powerful he's teaching them how to pray that in your prayer now he's beginning to make if you ever will ask anything it is that your kingdom come you know what this means the kingdom here refers to the fullness of the life the culture the sphere the kingdom represents every physical territory or every geographic definition where the influence of a king has been allowed to find expression it is called his kingdom so he says in prayer you must desire ultimately that his kingdom his culture his life his government let it come and he says let it come in earth not on earth in earth the first earth being you you see that now that earthen vessel it says when you pray you must desire that your life becomes an effulgence of the culture the lifestyle of heaven your kingdom come your will be done this is how his kingdom comes everywhere his will is done his kingdom has come you see that now the kingdom of god the manifestation of the kingdom of god depends on his will being done everywhere his will is allowed to find expression his kingdom is made manifest in my life as the first earth and then my territory do you know why he's teaching you this he's teaching you that i know you have a lot of prayer requests but the reason why you even have prayer requests in the first place is the absence of the reality of the kingdom that if the revelation of the kingdom in experience finds expression you will not even need to ask the things you are about to ask that i will answer them but ultimately it is for your kingdom to come and your will being done and you will not need to talk about rent again you will not need to talk about trusting god for some miracle somewhere that those things are side effects of the kingdom not finding expression is someone learning now yes thy kingdom come how by your will being done in my life and in my territory then he says give us this day it tells you how powerful god's giving character is that he gives daily now let me tell you this it takes a lot of love to give daily to the same person he says do not be afraid have this consciousness that god is a giver but look at the extent of his giving he gives daily 
the government pays people monthly businesses pay people monthly investments pay people quarterly and annually but he's saying you are approaching a father who is a giver and the structure of his giving is that he gives daily that means just because he gave yesterday do not be afraid to ask again he is not going through insufficiency give us daily our daily bread you know what your daily bread is your daily bread is not food your daily bread is everything that makes for your efficiency per day everything the favor you need the relationships you need all of them are called your daily bread the purpose of bread is to keep you alive and fresh so all of the components I need within my space to make for my efficiency per day finances relationships are we together the engracing the favor give us our daily bread very powerful prayer is someone learning god gives and he gives daily give us our daily bread now this is a very powerful one and he says forgive us verse 4 our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us i wish i had time to deal with this he's saying you must understand that this same father is so benevolent it is within his power and with joy and excitement to grant you forgiveness for anything that can give satan a legitimate ground to accuse you and that while you do that reserve that consciousness and apply the same rule in dealing with men are we together now he said forgive us our trespasses the word there is not necessarily sin is the word trespasses our defaulting that which comes by reason of wearing a human body the limitations that come by reason of being human that in as much as we desire to walk in accuracy and perfection the fact that we are still evolving through transformation we will find ourselves defaulting not walking in perfect keeping with your principles and he's saying we are aware that you have created a provision in our dealing with you where your mercy would always prevail and he says that while we enjoy that reserve this in our consciousness that as we deal with people we will also meet people who are weak and limited that means when you pray effectively it leaves you with a responsibility also that the same way the father committed benevolence towards you you must be apt to communicate same to others forgive us our sins or trespasses for we also forgive all that are indebted to us and then it says lead us not into temptation king james did not do justice there because god does not tempt people with evil the bible says it looks like he's saying lead us not into temptation he's saying build a garrison around us and refuse to allow us by any means get into anything that would tempt us for our destruction that's the original expression of it it's not to lead like to woo you no god does not tempt any man with evil when he says lead us not into temptation he's saying create it is within your power to create a structure that defends us from moving into temptation he says nothing shall by any means hurt you you have to examine all the means that are available nothing shall by any means hurt you are we learning and then deliver us from evil then you read on so Jesus was helping them to understand the formation of prayer that you pray to your father you pray by faith you approach him with the spirit of reverence and then that when you are praying your focus listen carefully your focus should not just be your needs your focus should be that his kingdom would find expression in your life because in truth i tell you when the kingdom comes and finds expression in your life by his will being done you will still remain prayerful but you will hardly have prayer requests again because when the kingdom comes like one of my dear people will say it will reduce your prayer points and increase your prayer life so that at the end of your prayer life all that will be left is worship no more petitions because the kingdom has become the ultimate answer to those petitions are we blessed 
now let me just share with us and then we'll pray I've studied a bit on the subject of prayer and I found out that most believers really do not understand the purpose of prayer why is prayer such an important requirement to the believer why does God mandate us to pray why do we need to pray what is the assignment and the jurisdiction of the prayer ministry to the believer you see one of the ways that we gain stability in the kingdom is through understanding if I ask you for instance my dear people here if I ask you to sit down and just remain there as an instruction you will do it because you love me but you will be frustrated because there is no revelation that supports what you are doing it will become a burdensome ritual for you but if I ask you to sit down here because I've given someone a signal that when he comes whoever he finds sitting down here he should bless you the awareness of that revelation will give you the staying power to remain are we together now you understand what I'm saying so just merely telling people to pray will only make people loyal to a man of God or loyal to a religious sect but once you give them the revelation to see the necessity of prayer and the assignment of prayer let me tell you this it will surprise you to know this and I thank God that this is a ministry that is strong in revelation prayer is a major foundational key in this kingdom but it is not the only key I hope you know that by now Jesus said I will give you the keys of the kingdom so the prayer ministry has its jurisdiction and it has its assignment but prayer was so constructed I, I would always use this expression that when prayer is not the key it becomes the hand that holds the key so in any case you will still need to pray are we together but to just believe that prayer alone will solve all problems it may not be accurate because there are keys that are given in this kingdom are we together this auditorium has a number of doors as I can see just because you have the key to say the restroom does not mean you have the key to the office is that true if you need to use the restroom you'll be happy because you have the key that opens it but if you need to use the office then you are stranded although you are holding a key africa being a very superstitious and religious cont continent we have a lot of regard for prayer and we do all kinds of things that we call prayer and we expect prayer to evolve into any key we need to open many doors and sadly we stand stranded before doors because we only have one key um, I'm going to be teaching you on the assignment the jurisdiction of prayer but then I want you to understand in truth wisdom is a key relationship is a key prayer is a key are we together he when he gives you the keys of the kingdom then you handle these keys and you can open the various doors that need to be opened as far as your life and your destiny is concerned but now since we're dealing with the subject of prayer I want to show you something very powerful that the Lord showed me um, from Scripture what is the assignment of prayer and what is the jurisdiction of prayer I found from Scripture that there are about four or five major assignments of prayer in the life of a believer let's run through them as we pray number one Luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29 the first assignment of prayer and in order of priority this is about the most important assignment of the prayer ministry in the life of a believer transformation the real assignment of prayer in the life of a believer is not requests a means for obtaining requests the primary assignment of the prayer ministry is the spiritual mechanism that evolves you to superior dimensions of yourself so you can evolve to a dimension of you that was not yesterday the weak you 
can become the strong you the timid you can become the powerful you the undiscerning and carnal you can become the spiritual you and the process midwifing that the former you and this new you is prayer it came to pass about and eight days after these sayings that he took Peter and John and James and the Bible says he went into a mountain to pray are we together now verse 29 the Bible says and as he prayed are you observing this the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening through prayer this is what prayer achieves in the life of a believer transformation that happens through prayer believe me no matter what is wrong with your life subject yourself constructively to the ministry of prayer and watch yourself evolve into levels that will surprise you i have seen weak people become strong through consistent prayer i've seen people without discernment grow into certain appreciable levels of handling the gifts of the spirit and that's through prayer everybody say transformation transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience It's called transformation the process that makes you become like Christ in experience he says my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you you can pray wrong things out of your life you can pray the virtue of the spirit to be at work in your life number two why do we pray prayer is the authorized platform as revealed from scripture for making requests and obtaining promises that every time you desire to make requests and to obtain promises the authorized the scriptural platform to make this happen is prayer mark 11 and verse 24 jesus was teaching on the subject of faith then he said this therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when not if ye pray in prayer he says believe that thou receivest them so we receive in prayer and then you shall have it i'm sure that you know that there is a difference between receiving and having you only have what you have received you cannot have what you have not received receiving is a spiritual reality and then having is the physical manifestation you only have what you have received are we together very important the Bible says when you pray among the many things that should happen in your prayer is that you receive everything God has given you receive in prayer and then you can have it Philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 and 7 gives us the biblical cure for anxiety it says be anxious the word there is not careful the word there is anxious be anxious for nothing he says but in everything that means the prayer ministry covers every aspect of your life there is no aspect of your life that prayer cannot cover in everything he says by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known have you read that in your bible he never said to assume that god knows let your request let the rent issue let the family issue let the issue in your job be made known unto god be anxious for nothing he says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known next verse and the peace of god this is one of the ways god answers prayers peace is a voice when he speaks his answer comes in peace he will speak peace to his people he says the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ so we see that the second assignment of prayer as revealed from Scripture is to make requests and to obtain 
promises number three why do we pray what is the purpose of prayer in the life of the believer are you ready for decrease and for creation hmm. prayer is the scriptural platform that gives the believer an opportunity to make decrease and to create possibilities in your life that it is possible to make to be what was not through the power of decrease and that in prayer this is very very powerful job chapter 22 and verse 28 job 22 and verse 28 it says that you will also decree a thing and it shall be established unto you who is the you the one who made the decree not the one who needs the result the one who made the decree you shall also declare a thing and it shall be established unto you so light will shine on your ways numbers chapter 14 and verse 28 numbers 14 and verse 28 numbers 14 1 4 and then 28 say unto them as i leave saith the lord just as you have spoken in my hearing so will i do unto you just as you have spoken just as you have spoken can i tell you it is not only god you speak to you speak to things in prayer the character of faith according to the pauline revelation is that is in the similitude of how god behaves and that he can call things to be that were not he can call things and make things to appear that were not decrease and creation i hope you realize that creation has not stopped you would not be an effective christian to believe that creation has stopped mm -mm. the fact that god rested does not mean creation stopped we can make things to appear that is not my goodness this is powerful we can make things to appear that is not we can call things we can call realms we can call dimensions we can call possibilities that is not yet within your space you don't need to look for them what you are looking for is also looking for you you just need to know how to call it to you hallelujah in prayer you can make decrees in prayer you can create possibilities right from where you are you can create a life of beauty and a life of glory in prayer this is very powerful it's an advantage that puts everybody at the same position that regardless my limitations territorially regardless my limitations by reason of my background the prayer ministry if understood can veto those limitations and call into my life something i was not born with and call into my life something my certificate did not carry i can call possibilities into my life you have to believe this so there is no need you see this was what apostle james was teaching and we'll wrap up with that one he said from whence come wars and rumors of wars and all of these things he says it comes from the loss that is in your heart it comes as a token of the frustration you have for not having results and he said it is unnecessary because everyone can ask and receive so there is no need to be jealous there is no need to be angry at another man's result there is a possibility to also attract same to your life hallelujah even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not hold on he never said the things that do not exist be not means it's not within your frame of sight every single bone from the army that disintegrated in Ezekiel 37 was still there but it was just scattered beyond the scope of sight under a certain condition it came back not every condition listen to me 
under a certain condition everything can come your assignment is to use prophetic words to direct your results and your answers to your place when you make decrees listen carefully when you make decrees and you create possibilities and the raw material for that creation is the word of god remember the bible says john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the bible says the same was with god in the beginning and then verse 3 says that all things how many things all things it didn't say all spiritual things it says all things that means the unit of every physical material is not an atom it is the word of god science has only exhausted itself all things were made by him and he said without him without him means outside of his influence was not anything made that was made so I can call to my life when you look at me all you see is not all there is there are some things coming there are some things coming and it is not only things you call you can call realms you can call dimensions you can call spiritual qualities to come to your life believe me this is true you can call the ministry of men to your life the Bible says the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon the king sent with his word he didn't need to find out where Joseph was he sent and they brought him out of his dungeon if the king sent for Joseph there are things you need to send for listen 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 when Jesus needed to have a triumphant entry he could not go at that state and he gave an instruction he said go to a city whose road divide you will find something there that is for me lose it and let it come and if they ask you what is your audacity tell them the king had need of it there are things you have need of for your triumphant entry and you must learn how to call it forth and let it be loosed and come to you if they ask you tell them the king had need of it I hope you believe what you are hearing yes. how do you think ordinary men rise there are no guarantees in life nobody gives you a guarantee as a man of God that I will come to your church nobody gives you a guarantee that I will help you vain is the help of a man if God does not instruct them can I tell you waiting for things to just happen by default will recycle pain in your life you can call things everything has an ear biology misled us even though we respect it to say there are living and non-living things interesting everything is alive it depends on who is speaking everything is alive it depends on who is speaking there were other people who spoke and the bones were quiet but the prophet said I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound you can call forth health you can call forth resources you can call forth all kinds of things you can call forth ravens from wherever they are to come and meet you at Brook Cherries Listen, when you know this, your prayer life becomes exciting because it is sponsored by an understanding. Lose that coat. And if they ask you, because someone will ask you, based on what is this result coming, your reply should be, the king had need of it. He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? 
Are we learning? Let's finish up to pray. In fact, let me stop here and just show us three hindrances to effective prayer based on the revelation that Apostle James gave us. Let's just look at it quickly and then we'll pray. Apostle James began to teach us in James chapter 4. Please pay attention now. James chapter 4 and verse 3. James 4 and verse 3. Let's start from verse 1 for sake of um, clarity. Now, here's what he's saying. Apostle James is teaching us on prayer. From whence come wars and fightings among you? He's challenging wars fightings and all of these things he says come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members the word lust there in this context is not a demonic thing or a satanic thing the, the word there simply desires that there is you have a desire a craving for something you want to see certain things happen in your life because you see psychologically speaking one of the indices that measure fulfillment is progress to the degree to which you perceive you are moving forward you will find fulfillment if at any point you find yourself stagnated it has an effect on you so he's saying from whence come your frustrations and all of that is it not among the lost that war in your members verse 2 ye lost desire now and have not and your desperation even gets you to a point where you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain ye fight and war yet ye have not simply because ye ask not He's saying there is no reason to fight. There is no reason to covet and be angry at another person's testimony. It's unnecessary. It's, it's an insult to the benevolence of God. He's saying when you hear that God is doing something, there's no reason being angry as if it was only one left and it was given to another. He said the only reason why you do not have is that you do not ask. Then verse 3, he now begins to give us the template for effective prayer and what to guard against he says ye ask so there are people who have done the asking and yet receive not he teaches us that it is possible in your prayer life to ask and yet not receive and he tells you why he says because ye ask amiss everyone say amiss he uses a very interesting word amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust one more scripture and then i'll build together what he has said a miss there means with wrong motives that means your motive is already corrupted for desiring it are we together even though you are asking but hidden within your heart is a corrupted motive james chapter one same james chapter one from verse five to seven james chapter one from verse five to seven Here's what he says. He's dealing with the issue of lack and how to want every time you lack. If any of you lack, not just wisdom, he's teaching on lack. How to get when, the mo when you find out that, that you are in lack. If any of you lack, he says the cure for lack is to ask of God. He was speaking with respect to wisdom, but it is not limited to wisdom. If any of you lack wisdom, he says, let him ask of God that giveth unto how many men? And how much does he give? God gives to all men and he gives liberally and upbraided not. He says, and it shall be given to him. Verse 6, reading to 7. He says, but let him ask in faith. This is another condition. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed seven serious tragedy here for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord 
so apostle james gives us three reasons why prayers are not answered number one asking amiss you know what it means to ask amiss to ask amiss means to ask outside of the provision of his will to ask without a scriptural backing this is where ineffective prayer comes most people just pray superstitious prayers most believers pray communicating lamentations and just because they've dissipated energy in praying amiss they believe that because of the time they will be heard to ask amiss means to pray outside of his will he said this is the confidence that we have apostle john now was teaching us that when we ask anything in accordance to his will he hears us his will means his word listen to me wordless prayer is prayer that is unanswered god is touched by the feelings of our infirmity but he responds only to his word you have to understand this there are no sentiments when it has to do with exalting the word of god because he has exalted the word even above his office he chose to submit to the word so when you pray an emotional prayer it will only comfort you because you are expressing your pain but there is no answer guaranteed from scripture the first assignment of a believer therefore in approaching prayer is knowledge not praying knowledge so that the things you are asking for will be in accordance to the will of god the guarantee that god will answer you is that you are praying consistent with scripture most believers do not pray in accordance to scripture most believers i can tell you this for free most with all due respect and honor most ministries do not pray approaching the prayer ministry with intention and with spiritual intelligence derived from scripture and so we find out that we keep saying a lot of things and dissipating energy and we hardly receive answers to prayer the margin of energy that is dissipated in prayer versus the result that comes is so small and it's not motivating enough this was the frustration of the disciples teach us to pray there's something about our prayer life we can't keep shouting and yelling and rolling around and like as though we are the prophets of Baal there is something about the accuracy of your prayer that for every time you dissipate energy there are results that justify it can I tell you the truth I believe that is in the heart of your man of God that for every time you come here praying that by the next time even if it's morning and night the distance between morning and night you should return with strange results that you stand here and say what happened I don't I, I know I said this in the morning and by evening God has taken five months and put it in one day can I tell you every time you receive real results you become too grateful to be quiet the greatest motivation for evangelism is personal results read your bible the madman in gadara the woman at the well every time people obtain genuine personal results they were too grateful even when they were instructed don't tell anybody how do I hide that God lifted me? How do I hide that I've entered another realm? How do I hide that the favor of God is upon me? Can that be hidden? Evangelism was supposed to be a byproduct of consistent results in the life of the believer. Let me repeat. Evangelism was designed by the intelligence of God to be a byproduct of consistent result your audacity in inviting people is based on your personal testimony come see a man who had told me it's not a suggestion come see a man I'm, I'm calling you with a guarantee and when they came to Jesus they came because the woman asked them to come but when they encountered him they said now we believe not just because you brought us paraphrasing we have seen him for ourselves 
I'm agreeing with your man of God in prayer that beginning from tonight that you will shift to another dimension of results in the name of Jesus Christ can I tell you do not downplay the power of results do not downplay the power of results the end of any argument is results results that are derived from scripture because how they come is also how they are maintained are we together praying amiss means to pray without a scriptural backing without faith with wrong motives that in approaching prayer you must approach prayer knowing this that if i pray with a wrong motive a motive that does not seek to bring glory to the lord through that result it is within the power of god based on my motive as an act of his mercy to deny me that answer it is not every denial to answer that is demonic or satanic there are many prayers that are not answered because god loves you he's not answering the prayer is proof that he's determined that you grow because an heir the bible says for as long as he's a child that he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all no matter how you love your child you will not take the key to your car and give a six seven year old child so there are certain times that prayers answers to prayers are withheld and god accelerates your maturity to gain the stature that can have that because you see there are certain results that when God gives you in your life, he must train you on how to maintain them. It will bring attacks. It will bring jealousy. You must be fortified with the spiritual understanding to maintain certain realms of result before it comes. When God suddenly gives you a hundred million or one billion naira, you will be surprised at the attacks that had no business coming to you. That will fish you out wherever you are because of what has happened you don't need to look for anybody's trouble we are living in the world of men the whole world lies in wickedness so before god will commit that dimension of wealth to you he will have to train you to know how to put the full armor of god so that you can withstand all the wiles of darkness are we together there are people who God gave one million and we didn't see them in church again. They ran away, did all kinds of things until it finished and then they run back because you see every time you forget your source, remember Abba, the prodigal son for as long as he was with his father, there was no lack. The day he left, lack began. He depleted until he was eaten with swine. He said how many hired servants as my father and i'm here feeding with the swine he says i will arise and i will go back to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants the moment he met his father there was restoration the signet ring was put on him again the robe of royalty came upon him and a fatted calf was killed for him hallelujah we are going to pray. And in this moment of prayer, I'm going to challenge us to take seriously our time of prayer. We are going to pray in the spirit. And as we pray, pray with this understanding that in prayer, you are evolving. You are evolving you know how a snake molts there's something called molting when a snake wants to leave his former self into a newer self it will subject itself through the process of molting it will shed off the old skin so when you look at the size of the old skin that is no longer the size of the new snake that is the former self the confused you can pray into the circumspect you the weak you can pray into the strong you the favorless you can pray into the you that has favor like Jabez you can pray oh that thou wouldest bless me the Bible says the mother cursed him 
she named him after her pain because i bore you in sorrow but he came to a point where he had to change that narrative he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray i can tell you stories of what the prayer ministry has done in my life hmm. let me tell you a little story pastor sam when the lord asked me to come to abuja from zaria i i fought with god for years because i said lord i don't want i'm not sure that i'm ready for this let me just remain there in peace i'm not I'm not sure that I want to come and do ministry in Abuja. I understand how expensive the life is, the complexity of, I'm, I don't, I'm not ready for all of these stories. I just want to remain there to serve the Lord peacefully. Finally, when I came, I remember just looking around and saying, where in the world do you start from? And then I remembered that in prayer we can make manifest the things that are not listen carefully the Lord gave me an instruction to go and get the map of Abuja the map of Nigeria the map of Africa and the map of the world this four and for a period of six months gratefully for the pandemic i looked at the local governments and i found out there were six local governments in this city and i laid my hands and i began to pray and i remember a time came in prayer i don't know what it is that happened to me abuja became small i i don't mean to be arrogant i, I you understand i sincerely have, I looked at it and it suddenly you know how like you're looking at a child playing I said what is the population in this city and it suddenly became small building up yourselves on your most holy faith prayer with power deflates challenges because every challenge comes in its magnified form it takes a prayer ministry to deflate it to its true size it is the character of satan to magnify simple things and make it how will i get this one billion how will i get this how will this happen when i looked at it i said this is it this is not this is not there was something that he did to my mind and it was in prayer laying my hands and speaking and I said Lord now I agree with you and the rest to God be the glory so I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables my dear people every man you see who God has helped and shown mercy with any kind of exploit it didn't just come just by dressing and speaking English no your prayer ministry is your control room where you play life like a chess when everything is done from there then you come out and you begin to watch things gravitate with a charm like quality towards you and you are wondering what is all this everybody to help you believe me based on the intelligence we get from scripture is within your vicinity help us don't just come they are called you can pass them every day and they do not even know the bible says there were many widows in Zarephath. that means elijah passed some but there was a woman only god knows what that woman was doing don't assume he just went to her. God cannot isolate one widow out of so many and send a prophet to her. Hallelujah. Sometimes when we, you see, it's good to give testimonies, but sometimes testimonies can be misunderstood. That's why most times men of God just keep quiet 
and they don't want to say things because people misunderstand it for pride and all of these things but i can tell you this if you understand the ministry of word-based prophetic prayer you will change your life like night and day you will marvel and wonder listen for some of you right now in all honesty it may be that nothing physical has happened in your life and you are spending your time praying with intelligence and someone asks you what do you do for a living and you say nothing think again nothing you spend time praying and they ask you what do you do and you say nothing nothing what do you have in your house she said nothing except when you spend time praying and calling for things let me tell you you did the same thing and better than an engineer who is working with a construction company was doing because that's exactly what you were doing you spent your day building and creating something that is about to manifest I hope you know that everything is built twice it is first built in the realm of the spirit and then it manifests so the next time you spend time praying and you say nothing think again I'm saying this because we're about to pray and as you pray in the spirit and as you stretch in the spirit I want you to use your imagination because there are two prayer warriors one is you the other is your mind they are all prayer warriors and God answers both he says now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask and think your thinking is praying too so don't just use your mouth and keep your brain your mouth can be saying, Lord, bring this blessing. And your thinking is saying, God, forget about it. You will answer both. Your mouth and your thinking must be effective prayer warriors. Your mind must participate in your prayer. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do and observe all his commandments which I command you this day it says that the Lord your God will exalt you above all the nations how many nations all the nations this is not a parable it was a literal statement when I read the Bible I believe it I truly believe it Distant shores and the islands will see your light. Listen, as it rises on us, distant shores and the islands will see your light. Right from where you are, you can lift up your eyes. And begin to see the possibilities that are contained in scripture a life of dignity and honor and glory a life that is invincible results like chariots following you the good hand of God and his mercy upon your life it is from that standpoint you approach Abba in prayer and then now the Bible gives us the advantage in the person of the Holy Spirit he says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth I will not leave you comfortless he says I will send one who will walk with you in this journey for the Bible says we have a limitation and the limitation he calls it our infirmity in Romans chapter 8 he says for we do not know what to pray for as we ought to that means he, God recognizes the fact that our growth is gradual but there are things you need now you may not have all the knowledge banked to to engage effectively the Holy Ghost comes as an advocate as an intercessor who can pray the will of the Father accurately through you 
the Bible calls him a helper and that he can help our infirmity the word infirmity there is not sickness it is the limitations that come by reason of wearing a mortal body are you ready to pray we're going to take a few minutes and please give your destiny an undivided attention as you pray do not allow the devil distract you forget about whatever bills whatever issues and let us join in prayer the fervent effectual prayer there is such a description to prayer as fervent and effectual of the righteous man availed much are you ready to pray please open your mouth and begin to pray whatever position you find comfortable just make sure you pray just make sure you pray Shalima Rasko Branda Katapratike de Belekatosia. Shapakatosa da Brandege de Balakosia Tabalandasia. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Mante Kaparataska de Brateke Lekatosia Tabahashia. Zapraska te raska da balanta barandeska de baliata. Ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye have not, because ye ask not. Balanda salaka da preska de la caparias. Pray, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, and defieth himself, and defieth himself. Shana makata paratas kata brenda ke paratoshi ata. Ebra kosh kati la parianda preske di balasi ata bakatosh. Shima nekete baria katosh. Leka te branda skate la kapraska di barakoshi akate brandi. Shadi barakata banda brata kaskote balakatosh. Imbrakatus katira sabalakata. Leke pros, leke te brandos koto bete koshige de belegeda. Shibenia shabarata kata branda kata balaka tosia. Imbreke te parus kati laka parus yatege de belegetos. Shana meleke te brandos kata branda kata paroka te shakete. Imbreke te koto protos kote leke te branda kata balaka tos. Shemanda kata prosko to balika prada da kapalia da balagatos. Shade baka paratos kani bande prada gade balagatos. Hallelujah. 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 Now listen carefully, please. We are praying now. In John chapter 10 and verse 10, Jesus was teaching and he made a very profound statement. He called Satan the thief. He says, The thief cometh not except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Are we together? So he reveals to us that Satan can steal, Satan can kill, and Satan can destroy. Now let me connect it to a mystery and then we'll pray. In Matthew chapter 21, please, give us verse 13. Matthew 21 and verse 13. This was when Jesus came into the temple. When he came into the temple, the Bible says he met people doing business within the temple is that true they were exchanging in the temple and he was angry and the bible says he began to whip them 
there were a few people there called money changers their job was to exchange you would bring something and they would exchange all that was happening in the temple so when jesus came he threw everything down and he made a statement that will be our prayer point now he said my house shall be called the house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves listen carefully do you know what he's saying he's saying at every point his house is one of two things either a house of prayer or a place where thieves are carrying out exchanges and that house is you you that temple of the holy ghost he said at every point in your life you are either a house of prayer or there are exchanges going through in your life my house shall be called a house a temple of prayer failure to be a temple of prayer it was lack of prayer in the temple that gave access for exchangers exchangers of destiny exchangers of all kinds of things is someone ready to pray i like you to pray and find that house back to a place of prayer my house this temple is a house of prayer that means the ministry of the thief should not find expression in my house the ministry of sickness and infirmity should not find expression in me because this house is a house of prayer pray pray let it be from the depth of your heart my house shall be called a house of prayer satan you have no authority to steal from this house to kill from this house to destroy this house because it is a house of prayer dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline